Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and I am finally here to do my every movie, every review all at once video where I promised you guys I would catch up on 2022 movies and then do like a mega review where I reviewed all the movies that I watched while I was sick, which I'm still sick. You guys will hear the evidence of that in a couple of minutes probably, or maybe even the next minute. So what happened was, <laughs> it's really funny actually because, uh, you know, I, I was able to determine very fast how this happened. How this whole thing happened. So, if you guys remember when I did my birthday video and I talked about the day before my birthday, we had Chinese food, which was nice. It was very helpful to <coughs> have that while I was uh, finishing up a shitty ass American Horror Story Season 5. Well, Somebody, not Safi, uh, coughed and sneezed all over our food. And you see, I saw this happen, but I did not know that this person was coughing and sneezing all over our food at the time. I saw it from kind of far away, and there is like a big counter type thing that obscures your view so that, you know, you have to go over there to kind of see, or you have to kind of peek around. Then there's the Christmas tree that's there. And so I was unable to see that, uh, you know, I thought that th this person was sneezing and coughing all over, like, the sink or something, you know, because, and this person, you know, they do not cover their mouths when they cough and sneeze. They're very rude and inconsiderate. And, uh, you know, it, it was just par for the course, though, because this person has made us sick already th uh, last year uh, in the summer. In the late summer, they did the exact same thing where they were at the counter uh, preparing the gross food uh, the other time, too. And they uh, coughed and sneezed all over the food and all of us got sick. Uh, because this person's so rude and inconsiderate. And so, you know, and I was able to determine that because it was uh, seven days before we showed symptoms. And of course, it takes uh, COVID uh, seven days to to come out. And so I didn't really notice it at first, you know, because I'm younger. And so I woke up on Christmas Eve and I kind <coughs> <clears throat> and I kind of felt just like there was this little pressure in my nose or something, like an itch. And I kind of felt like, oh, maybe this is because my room is cold at night. And so uh, maybe it's just because I have a little sniffle from not covering my nose while I sleep, which I usually do in the winter. I kind of forcefully cover myself in the blank with a, bl a blanket to make sure that my nose isn't exposed. So I didn't really know that I was going to be uh, really, really ill, which <coughs> what happened was it was funny that we got it because it, it was exactly like this other virus that we had gotten in 2018, and of course I've told you guys the story of that one before, where we went to Tim Hortons, and it was a big red flag that they didn't have any of the food that I wanted, you know, they did not have the ingredients to make a turkey bacon club for some reason, they did not have the ingredients to make broccoli soup broccoli cheddar soup for some reason and so I still just went ahead and got food from there and it was a big mistake 
and the person that was working there was sick with this virus. They coughed and sneezed all over our food in the bag before she handed it to us. And, uh, you know, it's it's not really her fault. I mean, she's the one who was probably forced to work, you know. It, it, and, and to be fair, it's something where, you know, you don't get over it for, like, months. And so, you know, she couldn't have missed work for months, probably. And so, we ate it, and <coughs> we got horribly ill for months and months and months. And, of course, we probably should have, uh, <laughs> you know, gotten some money from Tim Hortons. Uh, but we didn't for some reason, and it was terrible. And it's funny because it, it was spreading all around town. Everyone was talking about this virus around town in 2018 because nobody could do anything about it. They didn't know what it was. There wasn't any cure except for you know, just recover, rest and recover, and, uh, you know, take cold stuff a little bit too, I guess, uh, to manage the symptoms, and so that's like the same thing, it was the exact same thing, and so it was very helpful to get this, because, you know, we can see that, like, oh, we already had this before, we had it in 2018, and, uh, you know, that's why also we didn't have it very badly, you know, because all of us had already had it before, and, you know, we recovered pretty fast, like, you know, I know that we're still coughing and everything, but compared to what other people had, you know, it's really not, it, it's nothing, it's basically like the thing we had in 2018, and, and I'm gonna just go ahead and nickname it the Cottonmouth Virus, because it, it made my mouth and throat extremely dry. And that was my primary problem. As well as some other things. But it <coughs> it was very weird. It was very strange to get this, this sickness that was exactly like one that we had already had. Like it was so uh, irritating to get that at Christmas time. All because, uh, you know, we live with a person who's so inconsiderate and rude that they, you know, spread their germs everywhere, don't wash their hands, and uh, pollute all of our food. So, anyways, now we are going to go into movie reviews. As you guys... <coughs> As you guys know, on Christmas Day... I watched La La Land, and I'm not going to talk about that anymore because, well, I might talk about it a little bit with Babylon, but I'm, I'm not, this isn't a La La Land review. And then the next day I watched Snow Day. I already gave this movie a food review. I highly recommend you go check out that video. Uh, to see how sick I was, and see, this is how bad this movie was, I was sick, I was sitting there just extremely sick, and still, I had to make a video about this movie, like, that's how bad it was, for all these other movies, I did not have any instinct to, like, st start, you know, making a video about, uh, the movie and doing a review of it, you know, only with this movie, that's how bad it was, and it, it's really embarrassing, it's really modern, it's exactly what you'd expect if you saw this movie's poster, and, you, and you'd say, oh, I don't want to watch a, a modern version of Snow Day, because I know that they're going to ruin it, they're not going to do all the jokes, they're not going to, you know, do everything from the original. Well, you're right. Uh, do not watch this movie. Do not support it. It's a piece of trash. It's made for kids. That's not an excuse. You know, I heard Safi use that as an excuse. It was very irritating because... Let's go to the original. Snow Day. IMDb. Because... Let's see what genre the original Snow Day is. Like, I want to see, like, you know, I thought the original Snow Day was a children's movie. 
Oh, yeah, it is. It's, it has the word family. Adventure, comedy, family. Now let's go to the remake. Let's see if the remake has specifically children. Comedy, family, musical. The only different word is they have musical instead of uh, adventure, which they might have... Oh, they only have three tag tag words, different genres. Because that, that is something about IMDb. If, if you put up a movie and you want to put, like, multiple genres, it will only show three genres up at the top. And then at the bottom, you'll see all the rest of the genres that they listed the movie under. Uh, but, yeah, uh, it is also a family movie. So that's just a bunch of bullshit. It's a constant excuse we hear nowadays of why a movie is piss poor, why it is a piece of shit, why it is a flaming pile of trash. Oh, well, it's made for kids. Like, is that really a good excuse for why a movie is bad? Like, it, 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 it's like if you were to buy a child a toy and you said... Oh, this toy is a piece of shit, but it's made for kids, so... It's like, no, you would say, like, no, this toy is a piece of shit. Like, even if it's made for kids, since all toys are really made for kids for the most part, uh, <coughs> if it's a piece of shit, it's a piece of shit. You know, like, you can't just give it an excuse because it's made for kids. And I can't stand that, especially with this movie. Because I'm telling you guys, when Safi watched this movie, she was practically going full-on raging commentary mode, commentating over the whole movie, <coughs> ripping apart all the actors to shreds, and then... She does a video, and she's like, Oh, it wasn't that bad. It was made for kids. Like, yeah, fuck off with that shit. Like, what a joke. Uh, this movie was awful. We will talk about it again when we talk about it on the rankings videos, too. This movie's not getting away with anything. That's for damn sure. Ruined my snow day. Because that's the thing is... I was sick, and I thought, and I, I know I'm going to keep on saying I'm sick over and over. <laughs> I, I guess i got to stop doing that. But I thought, I just want to have a good time. I don't care if this movie is a masterpiece. I don't care if this is the original. I just want to have a good time and watch a good movie. Even then, this movie was trash. Even then, it disappointed me. So that's how bad it is. Like, do not misinterpret. Like, this movie is terrible. It's not something where it's just like, oh, this movie's terrible. Like, no, it's terrible. So the next movie I watched, I actually watched it in the middle of the night. And it was... <coughs> it was a nightmare night. You know, I was already starting to have trouble sleeping. Uh, there was one night where I woke up over and over and over again. The next night, I woke up over and over and over and over and over again. And then I woke up early in the morning and sat at the computer for an hour before taking a shower because it wasn't the time yet where I usually, you know, go out of my room and take a shower. Uh, so... I had gotten up really early and everything, and so I was already having trouble sleeping. It was very hard. I can't really remember why it was like... <coughs> it was a mixture of things. It was like my nose and my sinuses like were just clogged for the most part. And, and, and of course, it was really like a thing where they would unclog if I would sit up... Uh, and the first night was actually the easiest, though, because I looked up online, and I saw that apparently uh, you're supposed to, like, lay on your stomach 
when you have COVID because that it helps your lungs uh, breathe. And so the first night, even though I was terrible, uh, it was very easy to sleep. But then the two nights after that, it just got worse and worse to the point of where the third night, I was I got into bed. I was very excited to go to sleep. But then as soon as I got into bed, my left nostril clogged and I could not sleep. And I got up. And I sat there at the computer and I was like, okay, I'm just going to sit here until my nostril unclogs. Who knows how long, you know, it's happened before, by the way, like, even at the other place, like, there'd be some times where that would happen. And, (coughs) and I thought, you know, maybe I should watch a movie uh, and, you know, just get another movie out of the way. And I sit. I was sitting there thinking about what movie should I watch, and I put on The Fablemans, and because uh, it just came out, and it was really funny because as soon as I put it on, not only did my left nostril unclog, but then my right nostril clogged up and so it was like oh now I can't go back to bed because my right nostril clogged up and then it was even worse because I did not have any cough drops or any like uh what do you call it Uh, the the vapor rub vapo rub which I used that when I had the cotton mouth virus I used that to help breathe uh, to go to sleep and it actually made it to where I went to sleep and all my sinuses unclogged and it was the key to me getting better when I had that other sickness in 2018 but I did not have any of those tools available to me until the next day and I, I only I did not have any tissues all I had were these napkins from restaurants like Taco Bell Wendy's, McDonald's, I did not have any tissues, so, and and I ran out of tissues about halfway through the movie, Uh, I mean, not, you know, napkins, not tissues, so then I had to go into the bathroom and get a half roll of toilet paper, and the toilet paper was drying out my nose so much that it was making that even worse. And so I was starting to have a sore right nostril, like because of just rubbing that rough toilet paper against my nostril to blow my nose. And then at the same time, while in the middle of the movie, and I know that this doesn't have anything to do with the movie, but I'm explaining to you guys the torturous night that was the night of Christmas or whatever. Uh, It was torture. And so then my throat and my mouth became completely dry like the 2018 cotton mouth virus. And it was a nightmare. I had to start drinking sick water, which tasted so gross that it made me want to throw up. Uh, It it was awful. It was absolute torture. It was like... uh, It was like just the absolute worst, and all I could do was sit there and watch the Fablemans. It (laughs) I mean, it was like the most absolute, like, nightmarish scenario, because I could not sleep, you know, because when you sleep, like, you have to, like, you have to swallow, uh, you have to, like, breathe, like, in a certain way, and it's really bad because, like, I was not able to swallow, basically. Like, I was able to swallow, but there was no moisture at all in my throat, and so it was, like, this painful, painfully uncomfortable, like, dry feeling, and so I could not sleep at all, and I sat there watching The Fablements, and it was like, I'm putting up with this movie, it's okay, it's pretty good, like, it, it's, 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 it, eh. like, I don't know if I would like it more or less if I wasn't sick watching it, but 
it did help me. You know, I was a lot happier to just watch that movie while I was sitting there practically, you know, being tortured by this sickness. <coughs> uh, and it was like two and a half hours. And by the end of it, you know, I was happy, but I was really, really tired. Really, really tired. And uh, still after that, I just sat and sat and sat. Finally, I got into bed. And I thought, okay, I am going to sleep in a certain way where I don't have to do the thing where I, like, breathe with my throat in a way, like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, I basically had to trick myself into going to sleep, and I slept for, like, two hours, and then I woke up, and it was the next day. And so, now for the movie review... <coughs> But I just wanted to tell you guys, like, that was the absolute worst night of the whole year. Like, and it was so funny that I did that top 10 worst moments of 2022 because I did it so prematurely, it's not even funny. Like, I should have waited because that night, watching the Fablemans, it, it took the cake. Like, it was so bad, it was so torturous. It was so miserable. And what happened the next night, I will explain after Babylon. So, The Fablemans, it, it, it really felt to me like it could have been a lot better. Uh, but still, it was pretty good. You know, it just wasn't what I was expecting. You know, I was expecting maybe a third of it to be him as a kid, a third of it to be him as a teenager, and a third of it to be him as an adult or something you know I wasn't expecting for it to be for the most part just him as a teenager because this movie is very much a teenage coming of age movie it is very much like a high school drama you know not really like a drama drama but just high school stuff uh, family, home life, you know, it's a very intimate movie, it's a very personal movie, it's a lot like Honey Boy, although at least Honey Boy was a lot shorter, uh, it's very similar to Honey Boy, though, like, if you were to make a comparison, I really like the opening with him as a kid, and all that stuff, I really liked a couple of moments throughout the film, uh, especially the the part near the end where he has a confrontation with the school's bully and they kind of become friends. It was a very uh, cool scene and it was it was a great scene because you think about a lot of these other high school movies where that kind of thing doesn't happen. And so it was kind of cool that that happened in his life. And the movie to me was the best at the end. Because all the characters finally got to where it felt like they were they were meant to go to. Like the mother, she moves to Arizona because she's crazy and she wants to be with Seth Rogen's character. And this is all going to be spoilers too, so... <coughs> There's no point in just vaguely talking about these movies uh, right now. You know, that'll be the list video. And then the father is just kind of, you know, he just, he's, I don't know how to describe, he's just like a, a normal, like, working class person, uh, unfortunately, and he's, but he's really smart and everything, and, uh, and then the son, you know, aka Steven Spielberg, he finally gets into this studio, and then he meets with the director, John Ford, uh, AKA, you know, da played by David Lynch in this movie. That was the best part of the movie for me. That was the clear highlight. It felt like, see, that's what I expected to see for the whole movie. I expected to see like magic like that because that scene was just so awesome and it was just so good. And it felt like the most brilliant like payoff to the whole movie that. You know, you're sitting there the whole movie, and it's just kind of like, 
and then at the end there's this little spark it's like a spark of yes that's what I wanted the whole time <laughs> and I say that because the ironic thing about having that cameo at the end is is that it's kind of supposed to feel special but at the same time throughout the movie you know you're seeing these other actors who are you know they're known hollywood actors like paul dano michelle williams uh seth rogan you know you're already watching these celebrities in the movie throughout the whole thing and so that thing at the end it didn't feel as special as it would have been if they were let's say unknown actors uh, but still it, it, it and another thing it wasn't really that inspiring like I, I expected if Steven Spielberg were to make a biographical movie that it would be a little bit more inspiring because his other movies are like if you look at uh, Terminal, even that movie's pretty inspiring, and that's based on a true story. If you look at <coughs> his other movies, like Schindler's List, even that's pretty inspiring. The way that uh, that guy saves a bunch of Jewish people, like it, you know, he knows how to do inspiring. So it was a pretty interesting. A choice to make instead kind of just this almost like a personal diary entry of just this is what I thought about this 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 it was kind of weird it was kind of like okay I didn't expect that because I, I didn't watch the trailers or anything you know I just wanted to watch the movie without being spoiled at all my favorite part of the movie, though, for sure, was Paul Dano. Uh, I really thought that he gave an incredible performance as his father. I really felt like he 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 was like the most likable character for the most part. Obviously, aside Steven Spielberg, uh, as a teenager, uh, you know, he was a great character. He was a, a complex character. And he, he gave such a layered performance, and it was really unexpected at the end. They had this really nice little scene with him and Steven Spielberg, and it felt like, you know, the whole movie you're sort of waiting for them to have this scene together. The whole movie you're sort of waiting for finally, uh, you know, some sort of a confrontation, and it comes at the very end. And it's just so perfect. And so I did like this movie. It's just that it's really lukewarm for me. Like, I, I don't know really it what to think about it exactly. Because I was so out of it. I was so tired. But I was unable to go to sleep while watching it. So, uh, overall, remember those sitcoms where the wife would give the husband... A glass of warm milk. This movie kind of reminded me of a warm glass of milk. Like it's just, it's just it's just like a thing that's there and it helps you go to sleep. Because I I was able to go to sleep after watching this movie, so you know it did help in that way. But it was just very lukewarm. So the next couple of reviews. They're going to be a lot faster paced because I'm already at 30 minutes, which I, I thought I was going to go faster, but here we are. Babylon, this movie, oh, this movie was a mess. It's exactly what happens when you have a director who makes an overrated movie in Whiplash. And again, I don't think Whiplash is a bad movie. I give it like a 4 out of 5. It's a damn good movie. It's very, very good. But the thing is, is that nowadays, if a director makes one good movie, or at least one okay movie, he's already going to be praised as a next lord and savior of movies. He's already already going to be called the next Hitchcock. He's already already going to be overrated. He's going to have tons of film essays about him on YouTube. 
he's going to be referenced all over the place on the internet and like talked about as like, oh, wow, he's a great director because he made that really mediocre movie. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like, Whiplash is good, but it's not up there with like the best movies of all time. You know, just objectively. Objectively, it's not, it's not complete to me. Like, there's clear flaws in the movie. There's clear things that stick out like a sore thumb. La La Land was even worse because La La Land went bigger and even had more flaws than Whiplash. And yet, it was liked more than Whiplash. People said La La Land was a masterpiece. You have people saying it's like a classic movie. It's one of the best movies. It's the best movie. Uh, <coughs> it was pretty good. Like, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a comforting movie. It was like a comfort food movie. But to call it one of the best movies? Ew. Uh, but, <laughs> like, people overrated it even more. To the point of where it won all these Oscars. And of course it won Best Picture for like a minute. And then this is what happens. This is what you get after you overrate this director, Damien Chazelle. You know, he's a good director. Uh, I would definitely love to see his next movie. I don't care that this movie was bad. Uh, and this movie wasn't... <coughs> the worst movie it's just that it, it was very flawed and it was like instead of pulling back telling a story that he wanted to tell he went bigger and ev had even more flaws than La La Land so it's that same thing like with Jordan Peele where he made that Stepford Wives ripoff movie people overrated that and then he made Us, and a bunch of people overrated that. And then he made Nope, which is his worst movie so far. And it's that same thing. It's that same pattern. It's that same, uh, you know, overrated director syndrome. Uh, and this is what you get. You get Babylon. This movie has so many flaws, it's, it's not even funny. For starters... It's way too long. It should be heavily edited down, you know, and I'm trying to, you know, heavily edit myself down, you know, just doing this video, uh, this impromptu video. Margot Robbie, she's extremely overrated. She gives the same performance she always gives doing that, like, Harley Quinn voice and Harley Quinn type character, uh, uh, but a, like a fake voice, you know, like a really, like, bad voice and bad Harley Quinn character, and this is how, the problem, the main problem with this movie is, is that you don't know if the director is nostalgic for 1920s Hollywood, like a lot of people are in uh, the film industry, or you don't know if he's attacking 1920s Hollywood, it's like this weird thing where you can't tell the tone. There's no distinct tone in the movie. And so the whole movie, are just it's all over the place. It doesn't even feel like the 1920s. I mean, it doesn't even feel like... It feels more like the 50s or the 40s, like uh, Fallout New Vegas. That's what it reminded me of a lot. And... Uh, and there were so many shots in the movie where they had these close-ups of trumpets. Like, I was starting to just... I was so irritated. Like, God, why do they keep on zooming in, zooming out of trumpets? Like, stop! And there was so much just crap in the movie. So much excess stuff that didn't need to be in the movie. Like, the part where they fight the snake for no reason... The part with, like, I don't know, like an hour long of, like, that one woman doing, like, a solo song or something. Like, in the ending to this movie, like, ugh, talk about the most pretentious fucking uh, 
stick up your ass sequence of all time. Like, this takes the cake for the most pretentious movie ever. This sequence with, uh, like a montage of movies and things, and like this guy is seeing the future or some bullshit. Like, it is so cringeworthy, the ending to this movie. It's, like, one of the worst things I've ever seen. And there's there are some great scenes. There's this one scene where Brad Pitt, uh, he's the silent movie actor. He is told that he is obsolete and that there's always going to be somebody better than somebody in the industry. And, you know, it was a very sort of haunting uh, scene where the actress who played the mom in Snow Day, uh, she tells Brad Pitt this, and it makes him commit suicide. Uh, it's a very tragic uh, scene. It's it's a powerful, Oscar-worthy scene, unfortunately, that's it, it, it's in this piece-of-shit movie. And then, uh, also, a lot of stuff in this movie, you can feel that the... The, the guy who made it, he's taking it right from his other movies. So that whole scene with doing the take, the the, the scene over and over again with the, the sound, the first sound movie for Margot Robbie, that scene was just a copy and paste scene of the, the rushing or dragging scene from Whiplash. And it was it was like you could see that the director was trying to show off and he was trying to go like hey people really like those scenes from those other two movies that I made so I'm gonna repackage those scenes and just make them bigger and make them even even more spectacular and it was such an idiotic thing to do because it completely took out of the movie for me. I felt like, how many movies am I going to watch here? It felt like I was watching ten movies at the same time. <coughs> the score was very good. You know, the music was good. Uh, but it was a terrible movie regardless. The only thing that kind of saved it at the end was Tobey Maguire. They go to Tobey Maguire near the end of this movie. And it, it is just like the greatest thing. It was like the most shocking, surprising, amazing thing of the year. It felt so out of nowhere. And it felt like, I want to just watch a whole movie with Tobey Maguire's character. I just want to see a whole movie with him playing that character. Where he's like, I don't even want to spoil it. I've spoiled everything else. Uh, he, he stole the show. Like, if they didn't have Tobey Maguire in this movie, it would be a complete and utter failure. It already is a big failure. I mean, uh, it's also really not a movie that I like watching at Christmas time. Like, it, it really has no relation to Christmas or New Year's whatsoever. It would have been so much better playing in, like, the summer or maybe the early part of next year, like a February or March or something. You know, it is not a, <coughs> a Christmas time movie. <laughs> so, this movie is our Christmas dinner that we ate while we were sick. You know, that's what I would rate this movie in terms of food. You know, our Swedish Christmas quote-unquote dinner... It's usually very, very sparse uh, when we don't do what we need to do and add like the salmon and the other elements to bring it together. And we were so sick that we d I did not make any salmon on the Christmas day. And we just kind of threw some stuff on a plate and called it a day. Uh, we threw all these, you know, these sparse elements, these things that don't go together it's not a complete meal and I don't want to go into specifics because I'm already you know I'm already trying to hurry 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 I'll probably have to split split this video in two uh, honestly <coughs> but it felt definitely like just a complete almost like you're compromising like almost like 
the director knew that maybe Hollywood wouldn't greenlight a movie about each character, and so he just wanted to shove it all into one and then call it a day. But it it was a terrible, it was a disaster. It, but it's what you get, you know, it's exactly what you get. The next movie is Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. This movie, it's funny because it's it, it does the multiverse thing better than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness did. Uh, that's what's so funny about this movie is that this movie's like a little indie movie. It's not indie indie because it you know it still costs like millions of dollars, but it it's a small movie <coughs> in comparison to Doctor Strange too. And it it destroyed Doctor Strange too. Like it it wrecked Doctor Strange too in regards to the multiverse thing. Like it, it is so laughable to me that you had all these people who said that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was so good. And you know, he, he went to multiple universes, you know, what are you guys talking about? And then you have this movie where they go to like a million fucking universes and it's like just all over the place uh, in comparison to that shitty Doctor Strange where, you know, he's hardly in the movie. The movie's really about Scarlet Witch and he only travels to like three universes. Pretty embarrassing. You know, it, it's typical though with these MCU shit fests that we're given every year. So this movie starts off, and I, I this this review is going to be a lot shorter because it's a lot easier for me to just say the first third of the movie I really liked. You had the strong setup with this unhappy family, and I really liked seeing the father. Uh, I thought that the father was the best character in this movie. He, he was definitely the best actor. He, he was so good, and he was so energetic, and he was really able to transform into these different uh, personas, whereas I felt like the other two actors had sort of a problem uh, with some of their personas. They were kind of more hammy and over-the-top, especially the daughter, who turns out to be the, the villain of the movie, uh, she's not a very good villain at all. And then the second act of the movie, I really did not like. I thought that the the second... Because <coughs> the movie was 120 minutes long. So you have 40 minutes, really good. It's the setup. You have Jamie Lee Curtis. She plays a good villain because we all know that she killed the Halloween franchise so she you know we already know she's good at being a villain and then you have the second third it was really all over the place to the point of where I couldn't tell what was going on and it was just really insane and it, it was really cartoonish and I didn't like the second third of the movie but then the last act the last 40 minutes brought everything together in a perfect way, and I really ended up loving the ending of the movie. So, that was my that's my opinion of the movie. I think it it's pretty good. I will watch it again for sure. It's just you have to be in the mood to watch this one in particular because of all this multiverse jumping. You know, you you can't be like, okay, I'm just gonna throw on a movie. No, you have to pay attention. You have to be in the movie. You have to, you know, experience the movie for what it is. For the, And I really appreciate them making this movie, too, because they showed Doctor Strange what was what. And, in fact, like, it, it's funny because I think, like, everything is outdoing Marvel now. Like, now Marvel release a movie... And you'll have this other movie, and it just destroys that Marvel movie. And it'll be about, like, the same type of subject. Like, you'll see 
uh, Werewolf by Night, and then uh, Terrifier 2 comes out, and it's like, <laughs> like Terrifier 2 just obliterates Werewolf by Night, and, you know, it just goes on and on and on for the embarrassing MCU. But in terms of food, everything, everywhere, all at once, I think, was like the cardamom bread we made this year. It was very hit and miss with making this bread because I didn't know how long to cook it. It was hard to uh, gauge the, the temperature uh, since, you know, it's it's a new oven to us. So I overcooked it a little bit, but what happened was... The, at first, I thought that the loaf was really good, the first loaf, but then it got stale really fast, and you could tell it was really overcooked on one end. And so that was kind of the middle of this movie. And then at the end, I ate the, the other loaf of bread, <coughs> just a piece from it every day, and that one was back to normal. So it was kind of like hit, it was kind of like mixed, mixed bag, but overall it was good, and I'm glad to have watched it. Bullet Train. Bullet Train was a huge surprise, because I was originally going to see this movie in theaters, and unfortunately I did not like the trailers, I thought that the trailers made the movie look like a huge joke, and I thought that it looked like, ugh, I don't want to watch this. It, it's like they keep on repeating the same joke over and over with, you know, you look like a, a homeless guy with Brad Pitt, uh, and, and then uh, Lemon in the movie. Kept on repeating that over and over, kept on repeating that song, Staying Alive, and I just, I got really sick and tired of seeing advertisements for the movie. And so I just skipped it. And I was like, eh, whatever. But then I watched it on Netflix and wow, it was really, really good. Uh, this movie was, it, it was almost a masterpiece until the ending of the movie. Like, it, it not like a masterpiece, masterpiece, but just in terms of 2022, you know what I mean, like, in terms of, you have all these shit Sundays, and then you have this one movie, and it just feels like, wow, this movie is so much better than the others, it, it just, it blows the others to shreds, it rips them to shreds, and I think this will be the last one I talk about, before I end this uh, video and do a second part tomorrow, just because it is longer than I anticipated. And also, before I continue talking about Bullet Train, what happened was with the sleeping was that I was getting really worried about like having to go to sleep at, at night uh, because I, you know, my throat was still dry that day. And it was dry the entire day. And I was really worried. So in, in, e in the evening, I gargled with salt water. And it seemed like it helped out a little bit. And it kind of soothed my throat a little bit. And I got into bed. And I, I had to basically trick myself into going to sleep. And I had to do the same type of trick and I slept for a couple hours, I woke up, and then I slept for a couple more hours, and it was a rocky road, a rocky start. In the morning, finally, my throat had a little bit of moisture, and after that, I didn't have any really any problem sleeping, uh, because my throat was fully moist, and I wasn't having the dry throat problem anymore, really. So Bullet Train, it, this movie was just so perfect in terms of you had all these characters. They just kept on adding character after character after character. And it was so action-packed. It was so much fun. It was so, uh, 
energetic and vibrant and colorful and all the characters were fantastic they were all great like unique interesting characters that you wanted to see what would happen with them there were lots of surprises plot twists uh this this, this movie was just so much fun my favorite characters were definitely uh lemon and tangerine in particular i really loved Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance in this movie and I saw that he was up for uh, James Bond because of this movie and and I would agree I would say that if you're not going to cast Henry Cavill since apparently (laughs) nobody wants to cast Henry Cavill anymore because he's a white male uh, basically uh, then cast the other white male uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson you know, cast him to play James Bond, uh, you know, because he did such a, a credi- incredible job in this movie, and he was perfect as this character, and he, he gave the surprise performance of the movie. I mean, his performance was surprisingly epic, as well as Lemon's, as well as everyone else's. Everyone did such a good job. And of course, Lemon, he was like the perfect friend. Like, I really loved the friendship between those two characters uh, as well. I really loved that because it it was so positive. This was also such a positive movie, too. It wasn't dark. It wasn't dreary. It wasn't negative. It wasn't an agenda. There was no agendas in this movie. But you had tons of diversity everywhere all different types of people and it was just natural they didn't force it they didn't force anything on you uh it was perfect sadly though and when it got to the end it was getting a little too cutesy and jokey and goofy and the ending of the movie i think was a little silly it was a little silly when they finally crashed and Uh, Michael Shannon is about to kill Brad Pitt and then of course his daughter kills him and then Lemon runs her over I thought that that was all a little too goofy in the way that it was handled I really wanted Brad Pitt to have like a final battle of some kind with Michael Shannon I was really underwhelmed by you know I thought it was badass the whole movie practically Brad Pitt hardly had to do any fighting at all. Like, he basically just, he could do whatever he wanted. Like, it it was ridiculous. It was so cool. Uh, And it was like his character, uh, fate would just uh, give him whatever he needed and just uh, destroy everyone else in the process. Like, he could just go through anyone, it seemed like. And finally, you had this intimidating presence in Michael Shannon, and I really wanted at least just a scrappy battle between him, between them two. I would have really liked that. I would have really appreciated just that one battle at the end. But instead, it was just another cutesy thing, and I was like, eh, okay, whatever. And they ended the movie on like a joke with him and Sandra Bullock and it was like, oh, another celebrity cameo, another, you know, cameo that's like shoved in there. I didn't like that at the end too because, uh, I don't know, it just, it felt really goofy and silly. The movie ends on a joke about smart toilets or something, like really like uh, at the very end it kind of like like I was this close to putting Bullet Train as number one movie of the year only after the end of the movie did I move the movie down uh, a couple notches so that's how close it was it was that good of a movie I would highly recommend it I would definitely watch it again in terms of food I actually tried something while watching the movie that I had never had before. 
and I, I definitely love them now. Little Debbie Strawberry Shortcake Rolls. So as you guys know, I was supposed to do a Little Debbie, Debbie Does Dallas commentary, uh, but it was ruined by getting sick. So I had these Little Debbie snacks around, and I figured, you know, might as well eat them. <laughs> you know, might as well enjoy them, since can't. there's not really much else to enjoy right now, being so sick and feeling so miserable. And I ate this little Debbie strawberry shortcake, and I was so not excited because I hate strawberry shortcake. Like, I really love strawberry shakes. I really love strawberry ice cream. But I hate any strawberry dessert where there's pieces of raw strawberries in the dessert. You know, like, I hate it when... It's something that Safi used to do a lot. She used to put strawberry in a bowl and then pour sugar all over the strawberries. <clears throat> like, you know, that, like, I hate that type of thing. I hate raw strawberries. Uh, so, I was really not excited. And wow, they were surprisingly delicious. All that vanilla cream, the texture, the way that it was rolled up. They, these things are perfect. And I will say, too, the strawberry shortcake rolls might be my favorite Little Debbie snack of all time now. And I never expected to have said that, but that's how much I like the, these rolls. And the strawberry inside is more so like the jelly of like a jelly donut. So it's really like inoffensive and it's not overly strawberry, I guess you could say. And that's what this movie was. It was surprising, it was fun, it was vibrant, it was delicious. So, in part two, I will be reviewing Dr. Death, Weird, The Al Yankovic Story, Puppet Master Revival, and Tar. So please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of these movies, and then please subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more honest reviews. Goodbye everybody, see you soon.